This is Session 2, Introduction to the Interface. The CS6 release of Premiere Pro features a cleaned-up, customizable, more intuitive interface, and this session will introduce you to it. The Premiere Pro interface is composed of frames and panels, and the panels are labeled with tabs that can be added, moved, or removed at will. The two-up monitor display is new, as are the buttons and button editor at the bottom of each monitor. The project panel has also been redesigned to make viewing and managing media easier. So let me show you how to navigate the default workspace interface, discover the five panels that we'll use the most, the media browser, the project panel, the timeline, and the two monitors, the source monitor and the program monitor. I'll show you how to change the monitor display settings and customize the monitor buttons using the button editor. We can even hide all the buttons to make keyboard-driven editing a lot faster and a monitor display bigger. When you first start Premiere Pro, this is the interface you look at. It's called the Editing Workspace. Notice how simple, how clean and uncluttered it is. In fact, they've changed the entire layout of the program with this release. There's five panels we really need to pay attention to. Starting in the top right, this is the Program panel. This is where we're able to monitor the video that we're editing. This is the Source Monitor. This is where we view clips before deciding whether we want to edit them or not. There's a lot of tabs, and they're all located down here. The project panel is where we're able to keep all the files, the media, and the sequences that are related to this project. We can display these as thumbnails, as I'm doing here, or as a list by clicking on these two buttons right here. The thumbnail size is controlled from this slider. It can be from very small to very big. New with this release is the media browser. The media browser allows us to look at the hard drives that are attached to our computer and drill into the hard drives to see the folders inside. And inside the folders, we can see the actual media that's available to us. What's even nicer is that if I scroll here, I just have to put my mouse over a clip. It's called hover scrubbing. I'm not holding the mouse button down. I'm simply dragging it from side to side, and I'm able to preview the media while it's still on the hard disk before I bring it into Premiere to decide if this is the shot that I want to use or not. Again, we can control the size of the thumbnails by sliding this up or down, and we can change between thumbnail view and list view by clicking on these two icons down here. We're going to do a lot more with the media browser. We're going to do a lot more with the project panel in upcoming movies for right now. I just simply want to introduce them to you. To the right of both of these panels is the timeline. This is where we build our clips. And clips are built in sequences, and the sequence is stored inside the timeline window, which is represented by that gold box. As you're going to see in the next movie, we can customize the workspace, the way the tabs, panels, and frames are aligned inside the application. But there's customization available to us inside these monitors that I want to show you as well. For instance, if you see the wrench icon, when you click it, this allows you to switch the monitor from displaying video to displaying scopes. It can show one field or another field or both fields, in other words, progressive video. We can control playback resolution, which we'll talk about later. But this part down here is where it gets really exciting. Notice that we have a very limited number of buttons here. But once you know the application, you probably won't use the buttons nor the mouse at all. You'll be all keyboard driven. Go to this wrench turn off the transport controls, our picture just got bigger, all the buttons disappeared, and now you're doing your edit totally keyboard-driven without having to worry about excessive clutter on the interface getting in the way of you looking at your pictures. Another thing that we can do, we'll turn these transport controls back on. We can also display timecode. Notice above the hash marks here, there's no timecode numbers. We can turn them on and now we're able to see the timecode related to that clip. Again, the display is fully customizable. Click the wrench icon and you can say, show me or don't show me the safe margins, the action safe and title safe. Show me, don't show me timecode. Show me, don't show me markers. All this is at your disposal. You can change it in a heartbeat. It doesn't affect the operation of the software at all. We have the same control over here in the source monitor once we load a clip into it, which we'll be doing in the next movie. Another thing that we've got is see these buttons here. 
Now, <laughs> for those of you that have seen Premiere and earlier versions, you know that the buttons seem to have spawned. The buttons had buttons. There were rank upon rank, row upon row. Of the, well, what they did is Adobe threw them all out and said, what's the absolute minimum that we need? And you can customize this further by clicking the plus icon. This opens up the button editor. You want to take a button off, just simply drag it up and it's gone. You want to add a button, highlight it, and drag it down. You want to save that layout you can or reset the layout. In other words, you can build this to be exactly the buttons that you want that you use all the time. And if you don't need the button, then drag it up and out and it's gone. You can always bring it back by clicking the reset layout button right here. When we're done, click OK. The customization that's built into this version of Premiere is just stunning. But we take it to an entirely different level when we look at workspaces, which is what we're going to cover next. The new Premiere Pro interface is remarkably flexible. What I especially like is how Adobe has made customization so easy. The new monitor displays and the button editor are really useful. And in the next movie, I'll show you how to select and modify workspaces, which allows us to completely customize the entire interface. Thanks for watching.